Hello everyone and welcome back to my RP2000 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul. In this video I'm going to try to complete the lunar flyby impactor and orbit missions that we picked up. Of course we've done these things before but we need to do them again to get more funds because the crew modules are really expensive so we want to make sure that we have a lot and also there are upgrades that we need to do. But I'm a little bit concerned about the fact that the uncrewed lunar landing contract is not popping up. We're missing the entire landing contract category from RP2000 and that's not supposed to be the case. Even if we uh, don't have anything that we can do, like here, we have none of these contracts is available to us because we have to have completed other contracts first, uh, though that one is weird. But uh, yeah, so this one requires that uh, must not have completed contract, that's interesting. Uh, but it must have completed contract crewed lunar flyby, for instance. Uh, well, you know, we have crewed lunar flyby here, so that's all right. Uh, but this crewed lunar landing requires landing moon, which is the uncrewed lunar landing. And we do not have that contract here, even though it's supposed to be here. And I moved it from the landing contract category into the milestone category in the configuration, but it's still not showing up. Now, it might be because things need to be refreshed or something like that. I don't know. So we'll try and complete these uh, contracts first and see if that helps. Now last time we had the Echo rocket and the Echo rocket was very expensive and did not work. <laughs> so uh, that's not helpful. And I thought about tilting these engines so that there'd be better redundancy. Uh, so if we take a look at the center of mass, we'd have to do a lot of tilt to Make sure they, uh, if one engine goes out, the others point through that. I mean... How much does that actually hurt our delta V? So here we have 4,700 all together, uh, 7,500, sorry, 7,500 all together. And if we tilt more like that, it's weird, but uh, we lose about 50 just lose a straight 50. Uh, we can't quite do that. All right. We'll tilt it by that much. And yes, these nodes go there. Oh, yes. Not those places. Do we have enough margin like that? I don't know. There's still a very weak stage altogether, especially if we're going to lose one. I hope we don't lose one. I mean, technically, the ignition failure probability here is 2%, 2.07% right now. We've got some data units, but... So... We lost them last time. We shouldn't lose them this time. I mean, that's not how prob probability works. It can jump on you at any time. Uh, but, yeah, it's funny how it always seems like the probabilities are much worse than stated. Anyway, we'll build another one of these and see if uh, that adjustment works out for us or not. Probably not. I mean, even tilting them, uh, it doesn't look like they're going right through the center of mass or anything, so it could be w bad. But, alright. Yes. Save and build. In a pinch, we could just go back to the old CubeSat version and go with that instead. We need to buy some more upgrade points, I think. I should probably find a way to add the contracts to this, huh? Mm, contract alarms. I'll create next contract only. Okay, that's a good idea. So, yes, do that. Make sure you have the next contract alarm in Curve Alarm Clock. Would be helpful to make sure you don't accidentally miss it. Okay, we really should get a new paint job, but... Alright, throttle... I don't know why sometimes it doesn't like to read my throttle properly. <laughs> Let me use shift to that up. Alright, now can we... Nope, it only wants to go halfway. Nope, now it goes all the way. It's weird. Okay, so SAS on. And we want to go to the moon, so actually we need to do that again after I time warp to make sure that we're in line with the moon. And I get to use McJeb's rendezvous info to help line up. So now we have things unlocked. And 
Mm, oh, we'll wait the day. I mean, technically, we could probably correct on launch that much inclination, but we want to be as efficient as possible. So we've got our geosynchronous satellite overhead. It's not really geosynchronous considering it's wandered from the Indian Ocean all the way over here, but anyway, it's, it's up there. So for launch, it'll be all right. For transfer, I don't know. Okay, a little bit cloudier now. I'll throttle up. There we go. And... Ignition. And launch. Alright. So, our upper stage needs 8 minutes. But that's not to complete orbit, that's total. Keep an eye on time to apoapsis. Looking nice. Okay, am I tossing it high enough? I don't know. Preparing RCS. And separation and ignition. We have three engines and fairings. Of course, we don't just need these to work on the initial start, we need them to restart. I think I should probably fix the plumes, <laughs> at least the plume position. Hmm. Eh, it looks like I actually need to pitch down. But after last time, it's good to have some margin on our time to apoapsis. Okay... And shut down to uh, 278 by 193 or 194 ish. Uh, so, yep. We've got 2,000 left in this stage, and then we can use the photon interplanetary stage to do the rest. We, it looks like we, we are going to head out on this side, and I don't know about comms on this side though. Arriving in four days. Hopefully our power will hold out. Okay, how long do we have of electric charge? 10,000 units, let's say. 138 hours. I mean, that's uh, because apparently we don't get enough electric charge from those little panels. So that's five days and a bit. Maybe it is alright, but maybe we should try and get to the moon quicker. And capturing, of course, the faster you get there, the more it costs to capture. It's still 860 something, so it's not too bad. Okay, so we will do this maneuver, assuming that the comm situation is right. Made as a proper orientation for this. Facing bottom, we'll have two of those little panels on the bottom, so maybe that'll get better results, I don't know. And nope, this time around we can't. No, 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 don't fake out. I know smart ASS could do stuff, but it can't ignite the engines, I don't think. So we'll have to pass on this up. Oh, it just picked up. But anyway, um, wait one orbit. And adjust for waiting one orbit. Well, now... We've got this satellite here helping. It's practically just following along with us, but will it continue to have communication? I can't tell. Um, let's see, more links. Oh, it seems to be in a good, pa good place there. Okay, we need to get to the burn position here. A little bit late is all right. That just means we arrive later. And ignition. Okay, to the moon. Oh, uh, we got performance loss on one of the ether engines. Um, can we try shutting it down? Let's try shutting it down. Because that's gotta hurt us. So let's see if the other two are holding things prop- uh, there's a little bit of yaw needed. Uh, let me see if I turn off the RCS. We don't need to turn off the RCS though, because we're gonna- So, tilting it worked, sort of. The performance loss was on ISP, so we didn't want to continue using that. 
so it's still got us. Not too bad though. Okay, and separation and ignition. This is not the technical engine for the photon interplanetary stage. This is just one of the generic just right engine engines. Okay, let's make sure that we just do what we were intending on doing and not overshooting. Stop. Oh, a little bit fast. Okay. This doesn't have backward or forward RCS though. Um, a side to side RCS. So, so I have to pull one of these rotational maneuvers. I don't feel like that's the way that it gets any sunlight. Let's see. I forgot how I configured the panels on this thing. Oh, here now, here it's getting electric charge. It likes this orientation. Don't ask me. I don't remember. So, there's an orientation with this photon in a planetary stage that would be good. You're just gonna have to find it. <laughs> uh, sometimes these solar... Uh, the sun catcher module that actually indicates which direction the solar panels catch the sunlight, it, it doesn't always work the way I think it ought to, so... Especially when there's multiple solar panels facing different directions on the same vehicle. If it's just a single solar panel facing a single direction, that always works. But when there's a whole bunch of different solar panels, it's not always easy. Okay, we need to lunar flyby close enough and transmit data. Should not be hard, but first let's not immediately crash into it because we have to make orbit. We are facing roughly the right radial direction, but we don't have a... We do not have a thruster... Well, we could just use the hydrazine thruster, it is fine. Okay, that'll do. Make sure we have comms at periapsis, it looks pretty good. Uh, well, that temperature scan we've done, but the gravity scan we haven't. And we have plenty of electric charge. Transmit. Still taking a lot. And atmospheric pressure scan we hadn't done before. Okay. So flyby done. Now orbit. We could have waited until we got into orbit, but that uh, to do the science, I mean. But maybe we'll get some other biome for the gravity scan. Okay. Making orbit. Should we have a very vigorous impactor? Uh, it's probably better to get the gravity scan data. So we'll get low first. Sure hope we get a landing contract. Okay, shut down. Yep, lunar orbit. Oh, and it already gave us the received data, so because I had already transmitted it, it already said that that was alright. Okay. But uh, I suppose we could check again. Oh, temperature while in space near the moon we hadn't done before. And a new gravity scan. And a new pressure scan. I guess we weren't near the moon the last time I did it. Got tons of science here. Maybe this uh, basin here is something different. Let's see. Uh, but the gravity scan is new. Gravity scan is always good. Yeah, so that's a definite crater there. Maybe we should land in it. Though uh, we wouldn't have communicate. Well, we're not landing. We're impacting. We should impact on the side facing the Earth, though. Okay, this is on an impact trajectory on the side facing the Earth. Even though it's dark, not the right time of month. I hate to say it, probe, but I'm rooting for you to be destroyed. <laughs> I mean, if it turns out that this speeds you are able to survive, that would be wrong. I wonder if, if we're really, really close, we can get something. Oh, we got some more lowlands of the moon transmit.
All right. Very much disposed of. Okay. Impactor. Oh, it says launch a new vessel. What? We did launch a new vessel, though. It didn't count it. Hmm, that's not nice. Back to Space Center. We did launch a new vessel. We took the con- we launched this after we took the contract, but maybe it didn't like the fact that we did the other things with it? I don't know. That didn't used to be a problem. Milestones. Still doesn't give me the landing contract. Again, not the crewed one, the uncrewed one. Let me take a look at those contracts again to see what might be wrong. Okay, now we've got it. So the problem I think was that the collect science requirement was requiring specifically a probe report and we don't actually do probe reports in RP2000 right now. I might change that, but we could do first docking and all this other stuff too, but this uh, really doesn't pay that well, but then again, it doesn't cost that much. Yep, yeah. uh, I think that is our next goal. So, and on the bright side, if we fail in landing on the moon, we'll fulfill the Lunar Impactor contract. Isn't that nice? That's wonderful how that works out. Okay, so we pick that up, and that is our goal. It is an ambitious goal. It would be a difficult goal. Let's see what technologies we can unlock further. Um, I've been pining for electrics, that's for sure. Specifically with the goal of landing on the moon, uh, with a probe. We are unlocking general rocketry there. We... I don't think we need general construction per se. That Mark 1 crew cap... okay, that, that one is not priced right. And it doesn't have the RP2000 tag on it either. Yeah, I forgot about that one. <laughs> so, hmm, if you want to quickly cheat uh, using that part, go for it. Uh, so here we have some of the larger engines that are also fairly efficient. This Aeon Vacuum has 355, so that's much better than our Ether engine right now. But it's also much bigger. So, and same with the Engine 2 Vacuum. That one's got 365 Vacuum ISP according to them. So, yeah, that's why it's all the way up here. We've got 125. I think we should just go for electrics, though. And then we'll get that early controllable core, which is not so early. <laughs> but uh, uh, I use it for basically everything, so I guess it's not good to put it right up front, necessarily. Okay, so, yeah, let's research that. And we need to put upgrade points in, finally. So, definitely R&D. Uh, let's just get down to 500,000 first, and then we'll see. I mean, we can plot our course. We've got the tracking station upgrade, we got the mission control upgrade. Really, what more do we need? <laughs> Eventually, we probably need a launch pad that can launch more than 40 tons. It's fine for these probes, but once we land crew... No, once we not land, la launch crew, we'll need something more than 40 tons, I think. Um, so we have to save for some upgrade there, but I'll take it down to 400,000 right now. Okay, and put the rest in these upgrade points. That's only 150,000 there to upgrade that, and that'll get us to a max vessel weight of 800 tons, which will be plenty. This, um... gives us an extra build slot. It doesn't say that, but it'll give us an extra build slot, but... We don't need that immediately. Still, at our current science rate, the sciences that we are unlocking are gonna take a while. Um, maybe we want general rocketry first. I'm getting a little bit tired of these engines. <laughs> so uh, that, that, that can happen a little bit quicker. Uh, so, I mean, they're not doing bad, these engines, but... Okay, so landing on the moon is gonna take I mean, we, we're not coming back, so we don't have to worry about that part of it. But we're talking about 17,000 meters per second, really. Uh, so we're, we're not going to want this big guy again. We will want the big rocket, but we need something lighter to land on the moon. 
I want you to look like a lander instead of a cube set. Can we do that? We have landing struts. Look at that. Whoa, God, they're huge. All right, folks. Um, I'm going to add tweak scale. Yep. I don't think there is any hope. I have to add tweak scale. Adding tweak scale finally brings me up to 10,000 patches, by the way. Yes, a mere 10,000 patches we have broken for the first time. Okay, so I've added tweak scale and I think we'll just consider that an RP2000 requirement because it effect effectively turns the these sorts of parts, structural parts, into procedural parts, right? Yeah, now we get one of these little landers. Look at that. Isn't it cute? I don't think we're going to rely on the CubeSat RCS. Let's see what kind of Delta V we can get out of this. Probably just need that 100 Newton engine. Wow, it's actually pretty big. <laughs> uh, hold on, let's see. Let's see. Um, we'll need it at high pressure. Wow. <laughs> this is sort of ridiculous. Okay. Uh, but, 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 you know, we... Hmm. We don't have throttling. That's one problem. Hmm. It's going to be tricky without throttling. 40 kilogram lander. I mean, there have been stuff like that, right? It's not unheard of. I'm going to tuck it in and decrease the utilization on this tank because we really don't need that much. What we need is enough to capture around the moon. Of course, we haven't put the RCS thrusters yet. We need to capture around the moon and then land. And now the RCS. And we basically have this kind of port, which is mod propellant. So instead of having this top tank be that type, we're going to have it be a mod propellant tank. But we won't fill it up much. Hydrazine. One liter of hydrazine. Increase the utilization on this bit. This engine does have the possibility of ignition failure, 1.5%. It's got 40 ignitions. It's uh, RCS thruster masquerading. I guess we'll put these down here, maybe. RCS thruster masquerading as a uh, engine. We still have only tech level one. I don't know if we need downward facing ones. Probably not. There we go. Now they're not blowing at the landing struts, but they can control orientation, hopefully. Okay, yeah. That's going to be our little lander. Looks like some sort of virus or something. I said 17,000 meters per second. We're close. Do we need another stage? Well, maybe if we increase the utilization of this a little bit more, it'll give me a happier number. 12 minute burn time though, and note the thrust weight ratio, we need to land on the moon here. And this doesn't throttle, so it's going to be a little bit annoying. I hope the ignition time isn't too long, otherwise that's going to throw us off. But as long as we have this at 85, we get the 17,000 I was looking for. So we might have to complete the transfer burn with the little probe, but that's not too bad. It depends on how the two stages go, and you know whether we lose an engine or not. Uh, maybe we should tilt these so that uh, they, just in case one fails, the other can point through the center mass as well. It'll be a very minor tilt. The gimbling should do most of it anyway. Okay, well, that is an option. All right, it's very simple. Let's paint the darn thing. They actually call that fancy metal. Fine, we'll do a fancy metal. It's a Christmas rocket. <laughs> Alright, still seems a bit sad, but we'll go with it. Better than just the metal color. So we're building this one. 
Yeah, this, this stripe is sort of diagonal, isn't it? Look. Why is that one off? They made the textures wrong. See, I mean, this antenna, the antennae are in symmetry. This one is right along that line. This line should be over here, unless there's some technical reason for that to be slanted. Bizarrely, we sort of have an incentive to fail here in that our next contract that we need to complete is Lunar Impactor. <laughs> but, you know. We can always have it launch up again and then smash into the moon, so I guess it's alright. We can land properly and then smash it. But we'll have to make sure to smash it really hard, so that's a little bit difficult, because otherwise it'll just bounce. Okay, we are ready to launch, but I think I'm going to leave it as a cliffhanger. We are going to find out what happens with this lunar lander in the next video. So we fixed some problems, and I will update RP2000. It'll be version 0.0.4. So this will have the fixes to the, the uncrewed moon landing contract. It'll also have the part placement for the crew vessels. So the crew vessel pack that I had released will have the these ISS modules properly placed and priced. You can see they're very expensive. So they're here in space exploration, advanced exploration, simple command modules, and command modules has the bigger Lynx Neo spacecraft. So they're right here for now. And I'll try and come up with a heavy command module and stuff like that. But so that'll be the update and now, I guess, tweak scale is required for RP2000. I'll get your thoughts on that. But with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.